Do we have another person coming on? Yeah, yep. Um, so we're doing, doing okay. Good evening, and thank you for tuning in to another edition of Showtime TV. I'm your host, Omar Rasada. This is Artist Edition, and this is part three. Um, Women's History Month special, and tonight's uh, program is Women in the Arts. And I have some wonderful uh, guests uh, this evening. I have, you know, a lot of them are no strangers. Everybody knows who they are. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, Sweet France on. Um, we have uh, Professor Dreher, we have, and we have Tony Trower. So ladies, good evening, and thank you for being a guest on tonight's program. Okay, thank, thank you, thank you for, for having us. us. Yay. Okay, so let's start off with Professor Dreher. We're, we're going to start off this having anyone just give an introduction of who they are um, and what they do. So let's go off with uh, Professor Dreher. Well, Professor Dreher just finished her um, feature length film, had a special screening. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me show. I'm just going to go to profile now. This is uh, the, the uh, poster. It's called The Bell Affair. Awesome. It's, yes. And it's about Daniel and Mary Bell, who launched uh, the largest escape to freedom in history. What? Yes, aboard the Pearl. This is in Washington, DC. So we're telling her, we told the story of Mary and Daniel Bell. So we had a wonderful screening um, about two or three weeks ago, a special, it, it wasn't a premiere, but a special screening for invited guests, the crew and everything. And uh, yeah, so I've been at the University of Nebraska for about 20 years now. Um, and I teach African American literature, um, ethnicity in film. My specialty is black exploitation uh, in film, and so um, that the, that's that's generally what it is. So I have really moved. I am really moving into filmmaking. I am also a director, actor, um, and playwright, screenwriter. Uh, so. All of these things, and a writer, I'm a published author as well. Um, so all of these things make me up to be who I am. <laughs> wow, that's yes. awesome. Yes, awesome. thank you. That's awesome, that's awesome. All right, uh, Sweet Fashion, you up. Hello, well, after the, Dr. Dreher, I'm just a Professor Dreher. Is it doctor or no? It's Waquito. It's well, but it's Dr. Dreher to my students. Oh well, Waquito. <laughs> yes. After yes. Sister Waquito, that is all I'm, right. I'm, see, that's congratulations, how <laughs> and that's amazing. I look forward to find out what platforms I can support and okay. You. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, hi Marie, how are you, sweetheart? Hi, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> My name is um, Sweet Franchon, S-U-I-T-E. It sounds like candy, but it means the best of. Um, Sweet Franchon, I am a poet, a composer, a writer, uh, published writer as well. I am, my specialty is producing live inspirational um, shows that use multi art forms in a live production that include specifically around poetry and telling stories of love and life using poetry, music, song, and other visual arts. Um, my claim to so-called fame is uh, a production company called Peace, Love, and Poetry, where we produce a production that, um, that is called Soul Opera. And again, again, we tell stories of love and life. And um, let me see. I said I'm a composer. I said I think I, you oh, know, mm -hmm. I got to get used to uh, listing my stuff like <laughs> Sister Co Waki Waquito. Mm -hmm. Waquito. I'm getting there. Waquito. Um, but I'm glad to be here. I am an artist. I stretch myself to do some acting on occasion and but I'm looking forward to stretching myself even more. And I am inspired um, by this, this uh, meetup today. Thank you. All right. Hey, Marie, how you doing? Good. How are you? All right. All right. So what we're doing, we're just going to introduction of who you are and um, what type of uh, artwork you do as an artist. Um, well, I am Marie, otherwise known as Mari. I am an actress and I am a poet um, and I am a mother. And I just always got to give kudos to Franchon because she gave my son like his first paying gig. <laughs> so amazing. When he was all young in the game, he's doing so great right now. That's he's so like good. always in all of these 
Like he's doing West Side Story right now. What? Um, he, no. Yeah, he's doing West Side Story. He did Akita. He did. Oh, he just did. He we finished up um two months ago um 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 the Color Purple the musical. Cool. So he's the one, doing oh, really good. Oh, he's doing, the he's one is um on Middle Boulevard. I didn't make it. Yes, he was in there. Yeah, he was there. Yeah. He was in there. That's yeah, awesome. it was awesome. So he's doing great. I'm, 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 um, I'm an actress, as you know, because Omar. I was my first production with Omar. I was pregnant with Jermaine, so he was oh, on the stage from the time he was in the womb. Wow. Yeah, he, he, he was. He, yeah, uh, he's. I, uh, I can't brag about my kids enough, but, um, I'm. I haven't done any acting gigs for a couple of years since before COVID. Um, primarily, I've been doing a lot of writing, a lot of private engagements, and um, I've been featured now for some reason, like people want me on their on their songs. So I've been doing some poetry hooks on um, some people's music. Um, right now, I do healing through my poetry because I've gotten into... Through, um, through my own personal obstacles, I've gotten into making crystal jewelry, crystal healing jewelry, um, and I've become a certified um, nutritionist um, and hydration counselor. So I make holistic products and a lot of things like that. So I have, have a page that I'm starting to get up and going, and I really do a whole lot of meditation. But I'm bringing that all together with my poetry. So yeah, Give that's what thanks. I do. Give thanks. Go ahead. Look at you. Done grown all up. It's <laughs> Awesome, awesome, ladies. So I, wanna, I, I know. Wanna me and Sweet Friend Sean go like way back. <laughs> right, right. I, I want to stick with Marie. I'm going to ask all three of you ladies. I'm going to start off with Marie. Um, okay. What made you want to become an artist? What made me not want to become I'm an artist? Um, it's just something that you know when it's when it's in you. I was always wrote since I was since I can hold a pencil. But when I was in school, I I loved the theater. You know, I was in New York. I loved the theater. When I came to Delaware, um, I was in the Upper Bound program, and the director there really pushed me. He really saw that I was, I was talented, and we would go on trips, and he would always make sure we saw a play, and he would have me during the intermission oh, go really? on the stage. Really? And he's like, "You feel that? Who was your director? Who was your like, director? Who was your director, um, Marty?" Was it Bullock? Yeah. Were you there when Bullock was there? No, no, no. This was, you know, I'm old. This was like in the 90s. <laughs> um, honey, I was in the late 80s. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello. That's why I was like, it sounds like you were there when Bullock um, was It there. was uh, Mariko Tapper Taylor. Okay. No, it was Mariko Tapper Taylor and Dana Griffin. That's who it wow. was, Dana Griffith, Mr. Dana Griffith. Yeah, that's, that's good who it was. That carried his um, legacy. That's awesome. I'm sorry. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, it was great, and that's I. I just knew, and 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 I loved. You know, I did not feel that we were represented in a great light, so I always wanted to be selective in roles that I chose. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's always been a mission of mine to just make sure, and that's why I loved when you and I connected, Omar, just bringing a lot of uh, uh, positivity to the stage. You know, Omar was before, I always say he's before Tyler Perry. He was the original Tyler Perry. Like It was Omar. So, yeah, I just always, it, it felt right to me. It felt right. I had a message to tell, and I loved saying it through uh, theater. Awesome. All right. Okay. So, Franchon, Sweet Franchon, why did you become an artist? What made you become an artist? Did you wake up one day and say, "I'm going to do it"? <laughs> Born this way. Okay. Period. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Natural. Born Natural. this way. I've always been the most expressive. Um, I've always done things totally different than anyone in my family. I always had a vision in my mind that the world was so much bigger than my small space. And just like Madi, um, thank God for certain programs like Upward Bound and just having teachers who saw the gift in me and sent me to acting school. You know, I had a band teacher that introduced me to an oboe when I was in the seventh grade, you know, um, and I took to it and I was a natural talent right. with that. And I, I always understood music without being a, a musician, so to speak. And so, you know, um, 
and understanding um, the rhythm of music, understanding loving words. And when I was able to put those two together, honey, that's when the magic really began to happen. Always been a writer. Um, with an upward bound, I was introduced to Broadway plays. Uh, and then I was like, oh, I can write better than that. I can do that, you know. Um, right. But then life happened and I didn't have the courage because you have to, despite it being in you, if it's not nurtured, yeah. And it's shut down by yeah. family or whomever yeah. who wants you to do things yeah. more traditionally. And I'm I'm so grateful for how um, the shift is in in that you know it's not looked upon like you need to get a regular job now if you're an artist. It's encouraged. It's applauded more. Still have a long way to go, but especially in small urban neighborhoods and in, in cities, you know where we don't have a lot of outlets and. Fortunately, I had an aunt in New York who um, was a professor and at City College. And when I would go to New York, she like, go explore the city. And I end up at museums and other places. And so I had moments where it was nurtured and then it was shut down. And I stopped because I lost my confidence in it. Mm -hmm. But when it's in you, when you're born to know you have to express yourself, you find way, you're going to find a way to do it, whether it be positive or negative. Yes. We've seen that happen in children in schools. So when it's in you, no matter what happens and what I had to learn yep. is that when I stopped for a certain amount of time, it almost ate me up from the inside out. And I had to figure out another yes. um, platform yes. to get that out. So that's how I got into songwriting. That's how I began writing and executive producing shows, et cetera. And then I have an eye for talent because I have been a working artist. So I would always you know, want to encourage young and give young artists a chance to experience that. So I, I'm born this way, babe. All right, Professor Dre, same question. Okay, so three things um, that moved me to create, and that is it's through textiles. I am a seamstress. My grandmother was a seamstress um, on my father's side. Um, she only had a third grade education and she supported my uncle and my bro and my and my father through her sewing in the community of Columbia, South Carolina. Wow. So okay. um, so it was so she taught me to sew, and my mother was also a seamstress. And so to, to cut out, you know, to it, there's a process in sewing. You go pick out your fabric. You have a particular store you go to to pick out your fabric. You go to the pattern books and you look at the patterns to see what you want to make. And then you pick out your fabric. And then there's your notions, your thread, you know, your binding and everything like that. The kind of needle you need for a particular thing. So with sewing, you piece things together and then you get to see your product. It's right there, it's right there. And then you get to wear it. So my sewing and my creativity that way was affirmed in the black church, okay? Mm -hmm. And and oh my God, what, um, Miss Dreer, you have such talented daughters. She can sew, I mean, and you know, that kind of thing. So that was nurtured. That was nurtured and nourished in that community. The second thing was the black magazine, Ebony and Jet and later Essence. Okay. Because Ebony and Jet gave us to us to see Diana Ross on the cover, to see Harry Belafonte, uh, Sydney Poitier, Lena Horn, all of, to see us on the cover page and then have stories about us throughout, you know, that's the other thing. So it's the print media and then later write on magazine that you could buy in the grocery store, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that inspired me to want to sing uh, and to act because all of that was affirmed you know, in our print media. And also there were very talent. I lived in an all black community, went to an all black church, all black Catholic school. All of that was nourished in our black community. So, That's you know, beautiful. I was told that I was talented and I was going to be something from the wino in the cut to the preacher in the pulpit. I had that every single week, every week, it, we were told that because there were adults who had moved in the civil rights movement. 
You see, like James L. Solomon integrated U the University of South Carolina. He went to my church. He was one of the three with Harry Harvey Gantt, Henri Monteith, and James L. Solomon. So we had all of this in our community where we were told we could. Mm -hmm. We could, That's we were told. And so I had that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Professor Dreher, you, you mentioned the Ebony Magazine Jet and right on. And unfortunately, none of those magazines exist today. They they all taken off. The, I mean, that that's that's just uh, so sad. So, you know, as Roland Martin was saying, you know, black media is, is very significant, and we must have it. You know, and he was taking off TV one, but but he keeps him going by um, showing his shows on um, social media, Facebook, YouTube, and, and other uh, yeah, platforms. Yeah. So, um, man, so I just hope that maybe someday, you know, either those magazines come back or, or some, some new <laughs> magazines come. You know that to keep it going. Um, so all three of you are writers, whether it's as plays or spoken words. And so I want to start off with Professor Dreher, then move it to Marie, then Sweet Franchuan. Um, when you write, are, are, are you writing real life stories or, or are you writing fictional stories? Both. Well, both. Because uh, in my life, some of what, okay, how I grew up and what I saw in my communities with the Black men and women, right? Uh, and let me add in Black Enterprise Magazine, too. I mean, oh, yeah, to yeah. see all of these Black men, these entrepreneurs, these millionaires, it was in that magazine as well. So um, I use, I insert myself and my community into my writing. It has to be that, right? It, yes, I, you know, I so, agree. right. There's not an objective. I mean, when I'm creating the narrator, I am the narrator, the omniscient narrator, then there has to be some objectiveness there, but it's really subjective. It is, it is the women are a composite of the women in my community. That's right. That's the, right. Right. The men are a composite of the men in my community to include the wonderful, beautiful black men in the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. They were some of the most handsome men I have ever seen. And I got, that was replicated in my community. Right. So yes. all of this is interpolated in my work, even if I'm writing scholastically. Mm. So my first book, Black Women Entertainers, writing, dancing on the right, uh, dancing on the white page, Black Women Entertainers, writing autobiography. So let's just say my first chapter, Lena Horne. Right. I'm writing about Lena Horne and her autobiography. Well, Lena Horne came into my life a particular way, and that was through. Sanford and son when she made her guest appearance. And my father commented on seeing Lena Horn. It's like, oh my God, Lena Horn. My mother stopped washing dishes and went in to watch, went in the living room to watch Lena Horn. I I tell that whole story in the introduction to discussing Lena Horn. You know, so and then I move on into my scholastic, you know, theories and the like. So that's what my writing does. I have to be included mm -hmm. in it. The experiences I have have to be authentic, validated in my work. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yes. Marie, Marie. Um, it's, it's truth. It may not be my experience, but I'll, I'm writing about someone's experience. Right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, even if I'm writing a piece um, about a fantasy or a hope, it's based on truth. It's either based on my truth or someone's truth. Um, so very much so. Yeah, it's it's reality. Okay. I mean, I agree with both, but Sissa Wakuti said Wakuto said it the best for me. I have to emerge myself, but then I use my, I use it. My writing is a little, I take my, my truth, mm -hmm. but I use my imagination to create what I want things to be or hope things to be. Mm -hmm. Right. To inspire. Right. And to use those stories mm -hmm. and those characters who where I, you know, where, you know, if you watch people and as you say, what you've experienced, right, right? You know, I had a lot of support outside of the home, but I didn't have a support as an artist in the home. So I always, in my writing, you will see that contradiction, that whole okay. struggle mm -hmm. to be true and authentic to who you are. Mm -hmm. And I'm a black woman, 
So my voice will always be that of a black woman. I don't know how to be another voice, nor do I care to be, right. as Octavia <laughs> Butler once right. said. Nor do I care to be, okay? <laughs> and so, um, and and I love the idea of love and peace, and that creating this life, which is why I call it peace, love, and poetry, because. I strive for peace. I believe in love and I believe life is poetic. Like you create this and you're creating this wonderful story. And then from that, I have all these micro stories that I'm able to build right. upon, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And just, you know, like the magazines and I didn't realize until you said it, how important that was because I was such a reader and an introvert that I loved getting away from my life in those magazines, in these album covers, you know, I, I mean, I know every album cover, you know, I, I would study them and I would see who writes them and I would like who produced them, how many pieces and, you yeah. know, and, and all of that pay, plays an influence and is always in the background of everything that I produce whether it be music, whether it be poetry, whether it be a stage production, it's always in the background because it's the tapestry of, you know, it, and, and that's why you got to know music and such, these things are important mm -hmm. to how our growth and what we, how we perceive things. Because when I think about it, you know, Songs in the Key of Life was our, you know, Songs in the Key of Life was that thing that that we always heard walking down the street, you know, we, they, we walking down the street, looking back on when I, you know, we having a ball to these, this music, to these words that resonated with us. And we carry, we've carried that from our youth, our childhood into our lives. And so um, it's, it's all of it. It's experience. It's insp what you hope to be, what you imagine, what you imagine and pulling all of these things that have touched your life and having it and take and creating all these micro stories from it. Right. You know, I want to stay with you for a moment, Fran. Uh, what, what you and um, Professor Dreher do so fascinating as artists, you give in, in your line of work, you give other artists an opportunity. Uh, for example, um, Fran, you and I met back in 2002. It was at the Wild Child Cafe, I believe. And you were, you, you were doing... remember that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I can, I, I can <laughs> I'm a writer. I got to remember these things. Simple, but but any event, you, you, you have platforms where you have spoken word artists from Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and possibly other places come yep. uh, to, to perform. Um, and with Love, Peace, and Poetry, it's the same thing. Um, and when you went on French Street as well, uh, Professor Dreher, uh, you being a writer for film mm -hmm. and playwrights, you're, you're giving art, other artists opportunity, you know, for work uh, to, to expose their talents. So, so, so what is it as, how is it as an artist for you to give the opportunity for other artists uh, a platform? Let's start with a friend and then Professor Dreher. Okay. Well, it gives me life because I had to, I didn't have the, the benefit of someone giving me an opportunity. So I always had to create it. I always had to create what I wanted so I can give myself a chance to perform, right? And then when I started producing, I was determined to make sure that people would be paid and not just for exposure, so to speak. There are some cases I'm like, oh, baby, you just gotta go on the stage first, you know? But not often, I, you know, I want, I, want to, I want to have paid artists and I want, because you gotta, in order to help people, especially poetry, I was tired of the $5 shows and everybody want you to come pour your heart out for free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we don't begin as poets ourselves and those who create these platforms begin to have people respect our art as they would a musician or maybe um, an actress or whatever, it's up to us to have that. I mean, you know, it evolved into a performing artistry for me, but it started out just as a, I'm determined to make sure that I create a platform that is respected and begins to get the respect as other art forms and create and pay those who support and help me create this production. And that's, and so it means everything to me. It means everything to me to hear Madi say that her son is doing well. And I mean, because that's all I wanted. I'm gonna give you your chance. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna pour into you what I know. And then your only responsibility is to do well and then help somebody else, you know? And that's how you have to have that commitment to it. And um, so it means everything to me to be able to share 
everything, my resources and offer to younger people or people, and then they don't have to be younger. There's, you know, I didn't start performing until I was 35 years old, wow. mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, I had performed a little in school, but I, after you, I got out of school, there was this gap because I didn't know what to do, how to do it. Yeah. Right. I, get it. I didn't yeah. know that I could go and, and create and create a play and write it or go ask someone without being a part of a, um, some sort of organization. So that's important. We have to, um, we have to, cause if some, it happens. We, what we, if we don't have the opportunity to express ourselves, you know, that's my way to give to the greater of the universe to me. Mm -hmm. okay. Professor Dreher? Well, um, I have found that my platform has just been forming as I, be, as I'm growing as a director and as an actor and as I get the director really is, that's, that's, that's it there because I am helping actors to interpret the words on the white page, to read it, to read the script as literature, right? N not just as a script and lines for you to memorize, but to really see the intrinsic value of the story and the way in which the words are read, right? Wow. And to give respect to those words that you read. In other words, the audience should be able to hear every single word that you say. The audience should never have to lean in to try and hear and understand the words that you're saying from the white page. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to instill in actors this, to have a, a, a in addition to the, the, the approach to learning your lines and learning your character, right? Uh, finding the value, the intrinsic value in the words that you are to, that you're giving to the audience, right? The, the story that you're giving. So you don't just say, I have the strength to do this. You say, I have the strength to, I mean, you, you, you market it to, on your tongue, right? And so that it is projected to the audience to have respect for the words. So that's really, it comes from directing and also from my teaching as well to help students to understand the power of words, the power of the words on the page and how each one matters to your reader. Wow. So you as a writer must be very careful of the words that you put on the page. I don't care what you're creating. So that is, that, that's, how I'm giving back and hoping to help grow my students as well as the actors. Um, I want to ask Marie, um, you're a very awesome actress, one of the best actors Thank that you. I've ever worked with and cast. You're welcome. Um, is, there any, is there any type of character that, that as an actress that you will refuse, just absolutely do? Um, and if, if, if Fran and Professor Dre want to chime in, you can as well. Okay. I I won't do anything that's um, portraying people of color in a bad light. I think that's done way too often. I grew up in the 80s and the 90s, and I grew up in an era where we struggled to be heard. Hip hop grew, grew from the message, you know, don't push me because I'm close to the like we wanted to be heard um we wanted our story to be told i consider myself afro-latina everybody knows this so when you talk about the the ebony and the jet like my family that's what graced our coffee tables you know we that was our opportunity to read the behind the scenes and get to know the actors and actresses and entertainers and the models and everything for real in real life like these are real people and they're beautiful people. They're not the slaves that I see the story told so many times or the maid that I see the story told so many times. And with the Hispanic culture, when you 
look at Telemundo and Univision, when you see just the pale light skinned it, my mother's side of the family, both my mother and my dad's side of the family, straight from Puerto Rico, one is paler as pale and the other one is darker as dark. So we come from such a broad spectrum of, of shades. And even my children, I laugh and say, we're the United Colors of Benetton. Because if anyone knows my children, I have every shade from the blonde and the redhead to the dark and the, like everything. So I, it's very, very important that even if we're portraying a struggle, we're not portraying a struggle in which the other person has to come and be the savior, if you know what I mean. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with those type of stories, but that's all I see. And I'm really tired of that. So... Oh, I'm I'm at the age where I can be selective. I'm okay. I'm I'm great being selective in the roles that I choose, and I I won't I won't choose a a, a role in which it's it's just not the truth. And I I personally I, and this is artistic creativity. You had asked this question on a previous show, Omar. I won't do nude scenes. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you're asking roles that I won't do. I'm, I've never been comfortable. I think it's because that's more of a film thing and I love the theater. I, I'm not really into um, or interested in doing film. It's 100% theater. So yeah, that's, that's my, my preference. Okay. And just a follow-up question. Um, what is it like seeing your son on stage? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it is so amazing I mean my children are all doing so well like Jai's in college and he's doing football so I get to go to Moravian and I see him playing and then I come back and Jermaine's always like and and Jermaine I'm a big part of his character development and everything every day it's okay mom we got to run these lines or mom I, I'm really having a problem with my accent because you know he doesn't speak Spanish so I am doing he's playing Bernardo in West Side Story so we're really trying to knock it out the park with this one but it's amazing just going and it is a community thing I love all my family and friends coming out to see him and and all that support and just it I cry every time I see him on stage and I'm just so freaking proud. It always brings tears to my eyes. Like it's, and then I'll go back and my Facebook timeline shows, oh, Jermaine's little first course concert when he was like <laughs> 11 or when he took voice lessons and he was so frustrated. And it's, it's just amazing watching him grow into the artist that he, that he is. Franchon, you didn't know he goes to the University of Performing Arts. I did Arts. not know that. So he's like, like that's, so yeah, like he that was that, doing musical theater. That's just he just wow. took it and ran, and that's what he loves doing. And he loves dancing. Um, he the, he met up with a dance group out here, but they do dance classes in New York. So he drives. You know, he's young. He don't he got nothing but time. So he'll go all the way to New York to take the dance class and come back. Like he's living the life. It's it's amazing. It's great. It's really so is. awesome. It's so awesome to see him grow into that. I'm so happy. You tell him I yeah. said it too. Okay. I'm so proud of him. I will. Cause he often asks about you. He does. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> well, uh, uh, thanks, Sean. You and Professor Dreher, uh, I guess with you too, Professor Dreher, in terms of, you, you mentioned earlier about being a producer, thanks, Sean. Um, what are the challenges of being a producer? Money. <laughs> 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 Got nothing else. <laughs> Money. Yeah. But, you know, the good news is I'm, you know, you got, I found that being a creative, you got to be creative in all aspects. So it always works out. Um, and well, you know, uh, one thing about being a producer though, there's a creative financing piece, making sure you can finance it, a project. But as a creative, you know, I don't really like spreadsheets and math and Excel sheets and budgets and all of that stuff. But it, it has strengthened that part of me, that weakness, um, in that, you know, the first thing I ask them when, when they want to, you know, I do a lot of artist development coaching and they say, oh, I want to have this. I want to produce. I want to do this show. And I'm going, OK, what's your number? How much money you got? Well, how much is the event space? Well, here, here's a sample budget. And they, they, they told I have seen them not do the show because they don't want to do that part. And mm -hmm. um you know, and being a producer who performs in her own productions, I'm not sure if um, if uh, Sister Wakito uh, actually performs in her when she directs. You know, 
the other challenge is, you know, switching from producer to performer, you know, when to do that and when to, you got to go from that whole technical formal piece business side and switch it off and just allow yourself to be art an artist and let the magic happen. So those are my two challenges with producing. Well, working on the two projects that I directed and co-wrote, um, well, the first one, now 11 minutes short, I could put the um, link in the chat for you so you can take a look at that. Um, so I wrote the 11 minutes short and then co-wrote with the Bell Affair and directed it. Um, I didn't have any producing, um, any duties at all. But my producer, Michael Burton, he was on the money with this. What I learned about being a producer is keeping not only the financial elements in line, but really, you know, kind of keeping the director in line as well, because I would say, we need to have, we need to do this with this scene, right? She, and he's like, Waquito, the budget, we do not have that in the budget. To, to manage another scene. But I'm like, but it is, it will certainly enhance the narrative. It will give more development to the character. <laughs> you know? And so he's like, no, we can't, you know, we can't do that. So part of that is keeping the production in line, right? And everyone who is working on it, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, so, and also for the the, he handled, he ran interference for, so I wouldn't have to handle certain things. He ran, and it didn't have anything to do with money, but it had to, you know, he ran interference, you know, with the, you know, with the production. So mm -hmm. I, as a director could just run with whatever, with, with, with the, with the script right. and the directing of the actors. All right. So, but there were times when he really had to pull me back, you know, because of budget con concerns as well. Well, I'm fortunate. I'm the director, the performer, and the producer. So I already know what it is. And I get to direct people to keep them on task, you know? Yeah, so yeah. I'm kind of, and I didn't realize it until you said it. I'm, people told me that, but I kind of doing all of that. Yeah. Doing, mm -hmm. You know, but fortunately, I've had good people who I bring who started off as performers and I would train them to be production assistants so that, you know, you have multiple nice. people in the process, keeping everything, mm -hmm. you know, going. So, um, and, you know, I was just a poet. I didn't know I was going to produce and right. executive yeah. produce and, and become a director and perform mm -hmm. and write and compose, you know, it just, it, it evolved to that. Yeah. Uh, Professor Dre, you, you have a group on Facebook called a Black Filmmakers Group. Uh, you want to talk yeah. about that and then how, how that came about? Oh, well, Ralph Scott is the person who founded the group. Oh, okay. okay. All right. And it was a Yahoo kind of thing. Yahoo.com email kind of thing. You know, how he um, got that started. And then he moved to Facebook. So um, I met no, I did not meet Ralph, but I heard about his film short called Barbasol, starring Stephen Hill, who is now on Hawaii Five O, and is now going to be in the production of Color Purple, mm. and uh, Ebby Massey Mansha. Okay, so I was standing in line with Eric Branco, his, his the, the cinematographer, and. Um, we were just talking, he mentioned Barbasol. Okay, so now why did that catch my attention? Because Barbasol is the shaving cream. That's old school, right? So I'm like, I want to see this film. Right. Right. <laughs> I want to see this that's film. What I'm like, what? A film on Barbasol? Oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's what it's about, the father and son dynamic, the father, Black father teaching his son how to shave okay. and that kind of thing, right? Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I got in contact with Ralph Scott, and I said, look, I want to see your film. And so he gave me the link and I reviewed it on my um, blog, thedrayreport.com. And so we kind of developed a talking, hey, how you doing? What, what, what do you have in the pipe, pipeline uh, for your projects? 
And I invited him to the University of Nebraska and he came out here and stayed for three days. He gave a seminar to the students, um, a film seminar to the students. He came to my class and talked uh, to my students. Um, and so, you know, he invited me to join his group. He invited, and so yes, yes, yes. And then one of the moderators quit and he asked me if I would be the moderator for because I was on there all the time you know I was right. on there all the time and so he said would you do it so yeah so that's how that happened yeah that's awesome that's awesome <clears throat> once again this is Women's History Month so I want to ask you ladies <clears throat> start off Marie with Marie who are some of the who are who is maybe two or three uh female artists that you admire um I I have Quite a few. Um, I definitely love Rita Moreno, of course. Um, I yeah. really like. Yes, I, yeah. I, I love all of our pioneers um, who paved the way. But recently, currently, I'm. I, I really like uh, like the Zoe um, Rosario Dawson and Zoe Saldana. I really yeah. like what they're doing um and the young girl from um what's her name um she's doing euphoria oh yeah yeah Spider-Man mm -hmm. um, Zendaya yeah I, Zendaya. I, I really I really Zendaya. like Zendaya exactly Zendaya I really mm -hmm. like what they're what they're doing but as far as like role models and things like that I've always been in awe of so many different actors and actresses but it's always been the people that I know that um have I look up to and sweet French on you're forever my shiro like for real she I remember when you had the juice bar and we would sit there and have our rap sessions and she would so keep it real with me she'd be like Madi stop doing your stuff for free stop <laughs> saying your poetry for free like she instills like this worth in you like you you have something and and make people pay for it so it's it's literally and people like you Omar so it's really been our local um artists that that are still in there that have grown and that have paved the way for so many of us all right friend well like she says I have I'm inspired by a lot of people you know that have transitioned and all, like she said, the pioneers are, who are our ancestors who have paved the way that we can even create that. Um, but most of my inspiration has come from teachers and our unsung heroes in the neighborhoods. Um, but on an artist scene yeah. locally, I love, I am always inspired by Tahira Tahira, who yeah. I'm always amazed that you are a professional storyteller. You get paid to do this for the last 20 years. That is amazing to me, right? And, and that she's always working on her craft and she she's serious about the business of our culture, of the children and of her craft. Like, I just, I, I can't speak highly enough of her. And there's another young sister who I think is so multi-talented. Um, her name is LaCrea. Um, just check her out. That's all I'm gonna say is L-A-K-R-E-E-I-A, -E -E I think it is. Let me, she is one, like she's so phenomenal and I'm like Delaware you're so lucky to have her right now because she's not going to be here for long right um so I, I I'm all, I, I mean I get inspired very easily by other women but just women who because we're bad like you know sisters I've never met before and that just just bad I'm like oh my gosh I want to see the, I want to see the film I wanted to you know it's you got to seek it and right. I seek inspiration I go to Broadway and I I look yeah. for young talent that is like has not been so-called discovered one of my and he's it's not a woman but he's amazing and I gotta say his name publicly it's a guy named Ephraim Sykes I'm just gonna say remember I said his name okay, okay. he's been in Hamilton as a, as an ensemble he's been he his breakout role he's been, was um he's been in a Motown a musical he's a Broadway actor singer and dancer mm -hmm. um but his breakout role was The Temptation. He sounds familiar. Yeah, that, right? that's his been his breakout familiar, role. Right? But, and he just did a phenomenal play um, directed by The Roots um, Black Thought on Broadway that was short run. Mm -hmm. Like, 
like I'm obsessed with his his gift. Like I'm obsessed with his gift and his sister. She he and his sister from Florida, and they are just amazing. And they have scholarships that they've created a scholarship fund for other young actors abroad, specifically theater and Broadway. And the Sykes brothers and sister, they just their family is phenomenal. And I I think I know them in my head, right? Um, so inspiration is everywhere, you know, if you look for it. Professor Dreher. Well, for me, it was the black women in my community. I mean, it, they just were, just are phenomenal. They're dying out. That old guard is dying out now, but the way in which they, um, and the pre, our preacher, Reverend Roscoe C. Wilson is, issued a mandate to our church that they, they, we were to, they were to mentor the youth. I'm a product of that, where it was definitely mm -hmm. mentored. Um, my speaking abilities came from um, reading the, the scripture you know, before the pastor, you know, gave the, you know, gave the, uh, the, the sermon, directing the choir, okay, being secretary to the young people's ministry, um, singing solos in church, built up my confidence, and I, I could not have, I mean, I don't, I don't know how else it could have happened, and then that is, was replicated in school, but what I couldn't do in school, I could do in church, Mm -hmm. So I would have to say the black men and women in my community in Columbia, South Carolina, definitely I am who I am because of that community. In terms of in um, our artists, artistic community, it has to be Cicely Tyson. It just has to be her um, because mm -hmm. I mean, okay. the, to hear her talk about how her art was used for the uplift of her race to say to look at a script and to say how is this going to serve my community right she talks about that you know how she made the decision that what she was doing was for the uplift of her community that is powerful and the other thing for cicely tyson is that Every time you saw her, she was dressed to the nines from when we first saw her in Ebony Magazine and on the cover mm -hmm. of Jet in her braids, which gave yes. Black women permission to wear braids. Mm -hmm. From the time she was 90 something years old, she was from every interview, she was dressed to the nines. You see, no one is talking about that. She had her own designer, dress designer assigned to, you know, she, and he's still alive. He's on TikTok. I mean, on uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. um, young uh, guy about in his forties, but he designed for her. Wow. Or maybe fifties, maybe fifties, but he designed for her. So she, to me was the total package, mm -hmm. right? And how she survived being with Miles Davis, and the way in which she, okay, the way she handled that scandal, how she talked about it, how she didn't denigrate him, she didn't deny whatever happened, but the total package for me is Cicely Tyson, and, and how, she, how she uplifted Black women, too. Mm -hmm. You were going to say, Marie? Mary? At a time when roles um, were not that prominent positively for people of color. So exactly. yeah, she was phenomenal. She was I mean, phenomenal. it's so many to mention. We can get lost in naming yeah, yeah, them. Yeah, right. So many to give honor. Right. right, ladies. So um, before we end the show, I want to ask you three ladies. All three ladies are writers. So I'm not sure if any of you have done this or not, but if not, uh, do you foresee yourself um, writing a book? Anybody can start off. Yes. I see myself writing a book. I definitely, I, um, I've tried a couple of times. Um, I don't think I have a whole lot of direction. I really don't know how, how to do it other than just free write and somehow organize my thoughts, but yeah, definitely. Anybody else? Uh, yeah. I'm I, a mom of five boys. I have a lot of <laughs> stories to tell. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I have to, not have to write, but I, I have a contract for my second book. So I'm writing. Yes. Oh, great. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I, you know, I, 
I wrote the proposal because I wanted to write another book. So <laughs> right, I got right. it. And so, yeah, so that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. Uh, Fred? I mean, I'm sure I will to my children's dismay, but I'm sure I will. Um, but I, I don't, I'm really studying now because uh, with Octavia Butler having transitioned, her, her work inspired me because it has so much spirituality in it, futuristic um, vision, um, courage, uh, and, and under the so-called sci-fi umbrella, I'm really interested in determining how to write um, some inspirational work using poetry. And she used a lot of poetry and by biblical verse and spiritual verse, et cetera. So um, I will write, I mean, but you know, I don't know when I don't, I don't have, I don't have any pressure. So I'm developing that. I'm developing that piece on what I think the story should be like, and I'm more feeling it than thinking about it. And it'll it, 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 it present itself. Okay, ladies, we're gonna close out the show. Before we close, let's close out the show and give you ladies about a minute, about a minute, minute and a half. Any closing comments that people wanna contact you, any upcoming projects that you have? Let's start off with uh, Franchine. Oh, okay. First of all, I, I, I failed to shout out my biggest inspiration, my daughter, Asata Maze, one of the top designers. Um, up and coming black designers, um, sustainability designers. Um, you can find her in Essence, Vogue, et cetera. But I just want to say hi, Asata Mase, Mase, please check her out. A S A T A M A I S E. And for me, you know, I'm always evolving. So you can always keep up with me at Sweet Franchon, S U I T E F R A N C H O N, and see what's, you know, what we're producing. All right, Marie. Um, I am currently, like I said, I, I'm doing my um, meditation and my healing classes on Mondays is Manifesting Mondays. We're currently discussing the seven spiritual laws of success. Um, Wednesdays is Wisdom and Wellness Wednesday. We're going over uh, chakra healings. Um, and then Fridays, I pretty much do my crystal, my crystal jewelry shows. Um, you can connect with me on Facebook and Instagram, the Urban Mariposa on both, which is U-R-B-A-N-M-A-R-I-P-O-S-A. -A -A. All right, and um, Professor Dreher, close us up. So, yeah, all right. Um, you can get in contact with me at www.animatinghistory.com. Um, all of the information in, is there, so. Um, yeah, my, my advice to the writers here, take 30 minutes out of the day to write. That's it. Okay. That's it. <laughs> just 30 minutes. Yes, and 30 minutes. Okay. Just free write. Just free, put it on. Don't try to judge it or change it. You have to get it on the white page. You just got to yeah. get it down. Right. That's just sense. it. It's just 30 minutes and do it. And it will, you'll see it. You'll see the product come to fruition. Then you can go back and edit as you see right. it that makes sense i do that with everything else so you're right it makes sense yeah thank right, you ladies. so uh thank you for being guests thank you omar, thank you, thank you, omar. omar always okay, and, and ladies and let's check this out i just got finished writing my latest latest play called six black men so look out for it okay yes. then definitely okay. and to others please like subscribe and share thank you for tuning in Okay, God bless, ladies. Take Thank care. Thank you. I'll God be bless. in touch, Bye -bye. Doc. I'll be in touch. <laughs> okay, yes, be in touch. Yes. Marty, okay. you too. All right. Be so more. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And Take congratulations, Marty, on your son. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, ladies. Bye -bye.